Hello friends, welcome to EPG Padasala. I am Dr. Karpagam Chinnamal from Chikina Government Arts College, Thirupur. We are going to deal with the topic selection and care of furnishing with special reference to stain removal, mending, darning, patchwork, laundering and storage. A home is a space to live, to raise a family, to entertain others and to express oneself. It needs to be furnished in a way that will make one feel comfortable, safe and delighted. Furnishings, product, furnish, furnitures from soil and wear. They also add color and design to the room. The look of a room is enhanced with right choice of soft furnishings. In this session, we are going to get familiar with the factors to be considered in selection and care of furnishing materials, understand about stain removal, mending, darning and patchwork, be acquainted with the laundering methods and storage. The general factors that we consider in selection of furnishing are as follows. First is appearance. Different fabrics give different look to the room. For a glossy and elegant look, real silk or fox silk and for a simple and sophisticated look, linen or velvet is a good choice. Serviceability. It's important to choose fabrics that will be durable. But if you are a person who prefers change often, durability is not an important aspect. Care properties. Fabric must be chosen according to use and maintenance. Bigger pieces of furniture like sofas should be upholstered in poly silks or poly cottons as they can be maintained easily. Linen and synthetic fabrics can be washed at home. Silk and velvet requires dry cleaning. Affordability, budget must be kept in mind. Silk is very expensive. Cotton is one of the least expensive fabric. Climatic conditions or temperature moderation. Sued, velvet and tweed fabrics keep the room warm. Linen or cotton may be used to keep it cool. Pattern and color scheme of a room must also be considered before choosing furnishings. Theme or idea. One must follow a central theme. It may be either modern or traditional. Mix and match style could be messy and uncomfortable. Suitability or fitness for use. Commonly used rooms like living rooms and bedrooms must be furnished with materials that are easy to maintain. For kitchen and dining, cotton is the best choice as it is absorbent and washable. To add an elegant look to the space, Silk or tusser fabrics can be used. Other points to be considered are texture, quality and the status and prestige of the occupants. Amount of light and air to be permitted inside the room. For specific items, you must consider the following points. For bedspread, the material must be cleanable, wrinkle resistant and that requires no ironing and material for blanket must be attractive and it must also give warmth. Pillowcases, it must match the sheets in color and texture and should be larger than the pillow. Slip covers must be firmly woven with smooth surface and must be guaranteed against shrinkage and fading. The fabrics for sofa must be resistant to snagging, pilling, seam slippage and must be thick and durable. Silk and jute is not suitable for upholstery as a fine silk will tear even with a little pressure or rough usage and jute is rough and frays very easily. Towels must be durable at the same time absorbent. Rugs, you must select rugs which are flat and firmly woven. While choosing cushion covers, color is an important aspect. Orange, pink adds sparkle to a subtle room. For trendy look, blue and green can be preferred. Regarding curtain, light, air and privacy are main considerations in the choice of curtain fabrics. It must be sheer enough to let in light but opaque enough to give privacy. It must also have good drape, color fastness to sunlight and laundry. Care of furnishing material. To keep fabric home furnishings looking their best and to make them wear longer, they must be given proper care. The care required is determined by the fiber content, fabric construction and fabric finishes. Labels and tags provide specific instructions on care of the items. The general care aspects are frequent brushing and airing of the material, 
immediate mending when damaged by tearing, stain removal before washing or further use, intelligent choice of cleaning methods that is washing or dry cleaning, frequent laundering provided the fabric is washable, proper laundering method for type of fabric, it must not be laundered with strong bleaches, proper pressing and ironing, you must not iron it with extremely hot iron. Cleaning, to prolong the life and look of furnishing, they must be regularly vacuumed and cleaned. Curtains and upholstery must be vacuumed once a week and dry cleaned twice a year. Washing or laundering, for small items like cushion covers or removable slip covers, machine washing is suitable. The care instructions regarding temperature, machine cycle setting, method of drying and ironing should be followed. Large items such as full length curtains or loose covers must not be washed in a domestic washing machine. The additional abrasion resulting from a large washing machine load will create color loss, shrinkage and creasing. Never use bleaches. A mild liquid detergent is preferred for items that will be washed regularly as almost all washing powders contain some sort of bleaching or brightening agent which will dull colors or cause fading. Fabric must not be soaked for prolonged period of time or left in the washing machine while damp as this may encourage the color to run. Dry cleaning. For delicate fabrics that cannot be washed, dry cleaning can be done. Let's have a look into the care of specific items. Bedspreads, coverlets and dust ruffles require regular laundering to keep them fresh and dust free. Draperies and curtains are continually exposed to sunlight and dust. Shaking, brushing or vacuuming frequently gets rid of loose dust. Curtains should be washed often. After a maximum of 6 months, it should be laundered or dry cleaned. Lined curtain, velveteen and tapestry should be dry cleaned. Lightweight fabrics like lace, gauze must be washed with mild detergent gently kneaded through lather and rinsed well. It should be rolled in a towel to remove excess water and then pressed. Heavy drapery should be vacuum cleaned regularly and sent for commercial laundering once in six months. If your curtains and draperies are made of fiberglass, they should not be laundered in washing machine, twisted or wrung dry or it should not be ironed as well. They must be cleaned by soaking in mild detergent, rinsed and dried. Table linens, they must be laundered frequently to prevent accumulation of oily stains. Sofa, must be vacuum cleaned regularly. If pets and small children are, if, if pets and small children are at home, it is best to use loose covers on sofa as these can be removed regularly and washed. Rugs and carpets are very expensive, so proper care is necessary to maintain its appearance and prolong its service. Carpets must be brushed once a day and vacuum cleaned once or twice a week. It must be brushed in the direction of pile. Rugs of small or medium size can be dusted. They must be sprayed with sanitizing solution to kill bacteria and for odor removal. Woolen carpets must be sprayed with insecticide for moth proofing. Carpet cleaning. New carpet fluff due to loose fibers. Dirt that accumulates in a carpet is mainly of three kinds. Dust or light dirt. Litter that clings such as threads, hair and grit which are destructive, dangerous, germ laden and is carried on the shoes. It sinks to the root of the pile. Light dirt can be removed by suction. Sweeping removes fluff and litter. For heavy girt at base of pile, carpet needs beating. A vacuum cleaner which has triple action of suction, beating and sweeping is the best option. Appearance retention. The heavily travelled area receives the most wear and has crushed piles and the piles are damaged. For better appearance and longer life, we must reduce the traffic on these areas or you can use small rugs in front of heavily used chairs and furniture. Occasionally, move furniture and reverse rug. Regular vacuuming reduces crushing, depression and furniture marks. Turn carpets from time to time to equalize wear. Shampooing may be done. 
but it must be dried well. Stains must be removed when fresh. Wipe the stain, rinse and remove excess water using tissue. Place layers of tissue and apply weight. Let dry and brush lightly. Cushions must not be bleached. They must be hand or machine washed. Throws must be hand washed and pulled to shape when wet and warm ironed. Blanket. Warm hand or machine wash separately. Do not wring. For quills, they must be aired regularly. If they are non-washable filling, dry clean them. Do not iron. If it is washable, gentle machine wash is sufficient and line dye dry in shade. Pillows must be aired regularly. Spot clean them with damp cloth. Lay flat and dry. Pillow or mattress protectors. Warm gentle machine wash and they should not be bleached. Tablecloth, tea towel and kitchen accessories. If soiled, sponge them immediately with a damp cloth. Warm machine wash separately and no bleach must be used. Bed linen and comforters or quilt covers. Warm gentle machine wash separately. Wash them inside out. Shower curtains. If they are made of polyester or nylon, Warm, gentle machine wash regularly, rinse well, drip dry, do not iron or dry clean. If your curtains are made of PVC, wipe regularly with warm soapy water, rinse well and drip dry. Towels and bath mats, warm machine wash, wash dark colors separately, no bleach or iron. Upholstered or slip covered, upholstery must be brushed and vacuumed often. To prevent dust from settling into the body of the furniture and keep them looking new. Once in three months, they may be cleaned using foaming cleanser. Cleanser or stain remover must be checked at invisible spots to check for color fastness. They should be protected from direct sunlight and sharp objects and pets. Let's have a look into the cleaning coats. We must be familiar with cleaning coats. Cleaning coats adopted by furnishing industry and found in tags are as follows. If you find coat W, use only water-based cleaning agents. To spot clean, use the foam of a water-based cleaning agent such as a mild detergent or non-solvent upholstery shampoo. Apply foam with a soft brush in a circular motion. If you find yes, it means use only mild, pure, water-free dry cleaning solvents. To spot clean, use a mild water-free solvent or dry cleaning product. Clean only in a well-ventilated room and avoid any product containing carbon tetrachloride which is highly toxic. WS means either of the above method may be used. If you find X code, clean fabric only by vacuuming or light brushing to remove soil. Do not use liquid cleaning agents of any type. Stain removal. There are many types of soil, stains and spots which may occur on the fabric home furnishing. The factors to be considered are the composition, color of fabric, the nature and age of stain. The technique used will be important in successful stain removal. Basic procedures to be followed in stain removal are for best results, the stains must be removed as soon as possible, that is when it is still fresh. Blot or wipe the stain and never rub as it causes wear and pilling. Pre-treat stain before laundry as washing and hot water can set a stain. Determine the type of stain, whether it is oil based, water based, combination of oil and water or unknown origin. Known stains should be treated with their specific reagents. Unknown stains should be treated from least harmful method that is cold water, warm water, bleach, alkaline solution, acidic solution, oxidizing bleach and reducing bleach. Remove any excess material. Blot up wet or oil based spills as quickly as possible with an absorbent white cloth, tissue or sponge. Never use color towel or printed paper as printed towels because they may transfer dye or ink to the upholstery. For solid or semi-solid spills, lift off excess before treating using a dull knife or spatula. Decide on stain removal method, solvent for oily stains or water solution for water-based stains. 
test the method in an inconspicuous place to, de to determine if fabric color change will occur. When possible, work from the wrong side of the stain. This will prevent forcing the stain further into the fabric. Use a soft cloth, a white blotter pad or a white paper towel under the spot to absorb the stain remover and the stain to avoid spreading. Work from the outer edges of the stain. Heat sets the stain permanently, so do not press stained fabric. There are two common methods of stain removal. Method A, where only water-based commercial cleaning agent is used. Two tablespoons of uh, ammonia can be mixed with one liter of water and used. Blot the stain gently with a cloth, dampened with this solution, turning continually so that only the clean part of the cloth is in contact with the stain. Method B, only mild, pure, water-free dry cleaning solvent is used. Dampen cloth while the solution and follow the procedure described in method A. Let us look at some of the common stains and the method of removal. For oil-based stains, apply absorbents like chalk, talcum powder, fuller's earth, let it stand for 15 minutes, then brush off. If stain still persists, use method B. For chocolate and coffee stain, blot well with damp cloth. Wine, milk and soft stains can be removed using method A. For blood stains, treat them with a mixture of 2 tablespoons of salt to 1 liter of water. Rinse and blot with a dry cloth. If stain persists, sponge with ammonia solution described in method A. For fruits, rinse or blot it in cold water. For wax and candle stains, remove surface wax with a dull knife. Place stain between paper towels and press them with a warm iron. Use bleach if necessary. For ballpoint, pen or ink stains, treat them with rubbing alcohol using method A. For urine or sweat, method A is suitable and they can be followed with a small amount of ammoniated liquid detergent which will be very apt. For mud stains, gently lift off as much soil as possible with dull knife or spatula. Allow it to dry, then vacuum. For persistent stains, use ammonia solutions described in method A. For pencil stains, method B, followed by a small amount of ammoniated liquid detergent is suitable. Rinse thoroughly. For warm it, gently lift off warm it and sponge thoroughly with cold water. Then use method A. Mending. What is mending? Mending is a common phrase meaning correcting something that is damaged. For example, it may be a broken toy or it may be a tear in a pillow cover. The most satisfactory methods of mending, torn or worn out material are patching and darning. Darning and patching are more specific referring to repair of holes and tears. Darning, it's a technique of repairing small holes and tears or reinforcing frayed and worn out spots in fabric using needle and thread. It is often done by hand, but it can also be done using a sewing machine. Hand darning employs the darning stitch, which is a simple running stitch worked in rows along the grain of fabric. The stitches reverse direction at the end of each row and then fill in the framework thus created as in weaving process. In its simplest form, Darning consists of anchoring the thread in the fabric on the edge of the hole and carrying it across the gap. It is then anchored on the other side, usually with a running stitch or two. If enough threads are crisscrossed over the hole, the hole will eventually be covered with a mass of thread. Darning should be as invisible and as neat as possible. Hence, the thread used should be same as the original fabric in color and texture. Threads from the original weaving are unraveled from a hem or seam of the material to be done and used to effect the repair. Invisible darning is appropriate for extremely expensive fabrics and for apparel. If the tear is large and its edges are fraying, a piece of thin material can be kept on the wrong side under the tear and darned through both layers. In machine darning, Lines of machine running stitch are run back and forth across the hole 
then the fabric is rotated and more lines are run at right angles. This is a fast way to darn but it definitely cannot match the effects of fine darning. You can see the techniques of darning in the above figure. Patching. What is patching? In patching, in the place of a tear or hole, an additional piece of fabric of the same kind is inserted and stitched. For repairing big holes, patching is more suitable than darning. It is stronger and can withstand wear and tear. To make it inconspicuous, patch should be of the same material. In a printed fabric, patch should be cut to match the design perfectly. The edges of the hole or tear are trimmed to form a rectangle or square. Diagonal cuts are made at corners and raw edges turned under to the wrong side. A patch is cut a little larger than the hole and placed beneath with right side facing wrong side of the hole. The patch is tacked and hemmed with small stitches. Laundering methods Laundering is a process that requires patience and practice and a knowledge of the right technique. No one method can solve every washing problem. Dirt in fabrics can be classified as loose dirt resting on the fibers or fixed dirt which is held fast by grease. Loose dirt is removed by soaking or brushing and shaking. Fixed dirt is removed by means of absorption, washing and dry cleaning. It must be washed as soon as possible, otherwise the dirt becomes fixed and harder to remove. Washing may be done by hand or it can also be done on a machine. While using a machine, water temperature and length of cycle must be considered. For fabrics that are able to withstand machine agitation, hand washing may be done. Very soiled articles can be cleaned by friction washing by hand, plastic scrubbing brush or rubbing board. The article is wrung out of water in which it is soaked. Soap is applied on the soil parts and rubbed with hand, plastic brush or on a rubbing board until dirt is loosened. Suction washer can be used for normally soiled articles of large quantities. Permanent lather is made in water with soap solution and soiled articles are soaked in soap solution and pressed with suction washer until it is clean. For delicate fabrics such as wool and silk, kneading and squeezing can be done. Knead and squeeze the soiled article in warm soapy water without lifting it out. Washed fabrics are rinsed well, dried and pressed. Storage. The fabrics after laundering needs to be stored. The fabrics must be brushed frequently to keep them free from dust. Sun and air kills germs. Cupboards should be aired frequently. Washable materials should be laundered frequently. Others should be dry cleaned. Articles must be kept out of light as lights may fade the color. Never store damp cloths as it causes mildew. Use repellents to keep pests away. Use items in rotation. Fold differently each time. So let us conclude the session. In this module, we have looked into the selection and care of furnishings with special reference to stain removal, mending, darning and patchwork. We have also learned about laundering methods and their storage. We spend the highest time of a life at home and has special social emotional importance attached to it. Furnishing a room is one of the most challenging tasks as it can make or break the look of a room. Regular care keeps fabrics fresh and clean and extends wear. Hope you have got an idea about furnishing items, its selection, care, laundry and storage.